Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10, Heraklion. The discovery of the lost Egyptian city of Heraklion is arguably one of the most amazing of the last two decades. It was found in 2001 by Frank Gaudio with help from the European Institute for Underwater Archaeology. Since its original discovery off the coast of Alexandria, it's been yielding non-stop secrets. Heraklion was once the largest and most important port city in all of Egypt. Dating back to as early as the 12th century BC, Heraklion was destroyed 2,000 years ago, near the end of the 2nd century BC. What happened is a bit of a mystery, but it likely had to do with a great tsunami that caused sea levels to rise. It happened over a brief period of time, with the city gradually flooding until the whole thing crumbled into the Mediterranean. Ever since, it's been hiding beneath the water's surface, just off the coast. Ever since excavations began in 2001, archaeologists have found great statues, broken ships, the remains of temples, objects from daily life, and huge blocks of shattered stone. Many of these treasures have been brought to the surface, such as a huge red granite statue of the god of fertility, Happy, and a massive bronze statue of Osiris. Archaeologists even found a fruit basket from 2,400 years ago with the fruit still in it. Number 9. Genie Lamp A very real genie lamp has been discovered by archaeologists in Israel. It's a bronze oil lamp shaped like a face, found in the City of David National Park. According to archaeologists Ari Levy and Dr. Yuval Baruch, the lamp was intentionally buried underneath the foundations of a building to bring good fortune to the residents. It was what archaeologists call a foundation deposit, a type of offering that was typical in the ancient world. People would deposit special items in the foundations of buildings as they were being built, which were supposed to bring them good luck once their houses were complete. They could be buried under the floors, under the cornerstones, or wherever seemed appropriate. But this is the first time a genie lamp was found as an offering in Israel. It dates back to the Roman period, around the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD. However, even though it's being called a genie lamp, we don't know if the people who left it beneath the structure really thought there was a genie living inside it. The truth is that in the Middle East 2,000 years ago, genies were serious business. They were called jinns. People believed they could dwell in any inanimate object, from a stone, to a tree, to a lamp. They possessed all kinds of powers and could ruin a person's life with their evil magic. It may very well have been that whoever left the lamp underneath the structure thought there was a jinn in it, and that by trapping it there, they would be protected from evil spirits and granted good luck. Makes sense to me. Number 8. Ninja Throwing Stars A bizarre collection of flattened clay balls sat in a pair of Japanese museum collections for decades until 2019. That was when Japanese archaeologist Akihiro Iwata realized they weren't ordinary stones, but extremely early ninja throwing stars, also known as shurikens. They were used by mysterious ancient ninjas during feudal Japan as deadly throwing weapons. According to Iwata, these throwing stars come from the Sengoku period of between 1467 and 1615. They were almost definitely real weapons used by a ninja, or maybe even several ninjas. While we think of these characters today as fanciful martial arts masters from kung fu movies, the truth is that ninjas were more than heroes of legend. They were masters of espionage, assassination, guerrilla warfare, and sabotage. They date all the way back to the 12th century, but it's rare that physical evidence of them is actually found. These throwing stars were excavated from two archaeological sites in Greater Tokyo, periodically from between 1920 and 2010. Some of them were found in the ruins of Iwatsuki Castle, but when they were first found, nobody connected them to throwing stars. They had decayed so much that they looked like flat green stones. They were found along with some clay balls that may have been caltrops. Caltrops were also ninja weapons, thrown on the floor to injure the feet of enemy soldiers or horses when they accidentally walked over them. Iwata believes the ninja artifacts probably come from the siege of Odawara, which happened in 1590. It was when two of the most powerful clans in Japan battled for domination, the Toyotomi and the Tokugawa. Number 7. Magical Girdle Archaeologists have discovered a magical birthing girdle. Yep, that's right. But the girdle isn't what you're probably picturing in your head. It wasn't a piece of clothing strapped to a woman's abdomen to make them look thinner. It was a strip of parchment about 10 feet long and covered in Christian emblems. 
It was used as a magical amulet by women in the 15th century to protect them during pregnancy and to keep them safe during childbirth. The magical girdle was found in England and analyzed by experts at the University of Cambridge. They learned very quickly that the girdle had been heavily used. Many of the images and texts had been worn away by use, and it was covered in plant and animal proteins as well as human fluids. It was undoubtedly worn by many different women as they gave birth as a way to protect their babies. The Christian images on the girdle are quite interesting. There is a picture of nails, presumably from the crucifixion. Jesus' name is written on the parchment, and there is also a picture of Jesus standing with his crucifixion wounds, dripping blood from his hands. The rest of the girdle is covered in Christian prayers. Because childbirth was the leading cause of death for women in the medieval period, they believed the pictures of Christ and the Christian prayers wrapped around their bellies would protect them and their infants. Number 6. Roman Feast Mosaic During excavations in the ancient city of Caesarea in Turkey, archaeologists came across a mosaic nearly 2,000 years old. The mosaic shows an ancient Roman party, a festival or a banquet, that may have been held before a great hunt. In the mosaic, we can see two couples sitting at the very center, some women in the corner dancing to music, a boy with bare feet climbing a fig tree, and a guy blowing on a lute. It may not seem like that great of a shindig by today's standards, but this was the Roman equivalent of going to a club on a Friday night. Really, it's a snapshot of a legendary Roman party that's managed to survive all these years, buried underneath the ruins of a once great city. The city is also quite fascinating. For centuries, it was called Karamana Maras, ruled by the Assyrians, the Persians, and later the Macedonians. When the city was conquered by the Romans, they changed its name to Caesarea in honor of the great Julius Caesar Augustus. It became a major hub of Roman activity and apparently a pretty wild party destination. But 1,500 years ago, a great landslide buried the city. It was truly buried rolled over and covered in several feet of dirt. It remained hidden underground until found by archaeologists in 2007. If you could go back in time and join a rambunctious Roman party 2,000 years ago, would you? Let me know in the comments. And now for number five, but first want to give a big shout out to Sasha, Layla, and Teresa Strickland, who's a longtime subscriber. Thanks so much for watching. We wouldn't be here without you. If you are new here, welcome, and be sure to subscribe to join the Origins Explained family. Number 5. The Vindolanda Tablets The Vindolanda Tablets, also sometimes called the Vindolanda Letters, were discovered at the ancient Roman fort of Vindolanda in England. Each of the tablets is a thin piece of wood roughly the size of a postcard. Each one was used by a Roman soldier garrisoned at the fortress to write a letter home to their family on the other side of Europe. The letters were written between 85 and 130 AD. There have been plenty of other tablets like this found throughout ancient Rome, but never in such abundance as at Vindolanda. They were made from imported spruce or larch wood, smooth to make writing easier, and even scored in the center so they could be folded without the mailman reading the contents. The letters found in the fortress were written by soldiers, officers, wives, merchants, slaves, and anyone else who lived in its walls that could write. They wrote only in Latin, and they weren't very good at it. Archaeologists translating the tablets found that people used extremely poor punctuation and frequent improper spelling. It could be compared to how people today rarely use proper grammar while texting. In total, 1,300 tablets were found at Vindolanda. Why they never got delivered is still a mystery. Number 4. Ancient Roman Cemetery Workers in Gaza stumbled upon an ancient Roman cemetery 2,000 years ago. Over 20 mysterious graves were found near the shoreline of the northern Gaza Strip in the midst of constructing a housing project. The Antiquities Ministry has called it one of the most important discoveries in the past 10 years. But this should be no surprise considering how rich the history of Gaza is. It's been an important hub for multiple civilizations as far back as the days of ancient Egypt and even the Philistines from the Bible. It became part of the Roman Empire and was a busy area during the Crusades. Archaeologists have even discovered the ruins of a city once besieged by Alexander the Great, and the ruins of a different city destroyed by the Mongol invasion. In this ancient Roman cemetery, archaeologists believe there are at least 80 graves in total, yet they've only identified 20 and have only opened two of them. 
One of the graves contained the ghoulish remains of a skeleton, along with some clay jars. What the rest of the graves contain will be revealed with time. Number 3. Sunken Treasure An amateur group of freedivers stumbled upon a mysterious golden treasure in 2021 at the bottom of the Mediterranean Sea. They were swimming along the Spanish coast when they came across coins from 1,500 years ago. It proved to be one of the largest hordes of Roman coins ever discovered. The divers, Spanish brothers-in-law Cesar Alcala and Luis Pardo, found the stash of gold while on vacation with their families. They had rented snorkeling equipment, never anticipating that they would find actual treasure. But they did! 53 gold coins in total, dated by archaeologists as coming from 364 to 408 AD. This was at the very end of the Roman Empire when it was in a steep decline. The coins were in such good condition that archaeologists were able to read the inscriptions on them very easily. The faces of the Roman emperors minted on the coins were also clear as day, showing emperors such as Honorius, Arcadius, Theodosius, and Valentinian I. The only thing researchers need to figure out now is how the coins ended up at the bottom of the sea. Number 2. Assyrian Armor Archaeologists have uncovered an ancient piece of leather armor made in the style of the Assyrians. The armor is 2,700 years old, but it wasn't found in Assyria, it was found in China. It was discovered in 2013 in a Chinese tomb near the city of Turfan. Archaeologists have described it as a type of waistcoat made of scales. It would have been put on like an apron to cover your front, lower region, sides, and lower back. Dr. Patrick Vertman from the University of Zurich says the armor was very versatile, able to be put on quickly without someone else having to help. It was also a one-size-fits-all type deal, so soldiers didn't need to worry about straps or buckles anymore. The coolest part about the armor is that it's made from scales. The team counted 5,440 small leather scales used in crafting the armor, with 140 larger scales. All these pieces were bound together using leather laces. It would have been nearly impenetrable by arrows and would have protected the wearer from sword slashes. Number 1. Primeval China An international team of researchers have just shed light on the lifestyle of primitive people living in China 40,000 years ago. At the mysterious archaeological site of Xiama Bay, researchers found stone tools and evidence of ochre processing. Ochre was a really important color in the ancient world. It's the processing of the ochre that's really got everyone's attention. It shows the ancient people here had figured out how to extract red pigment in huge quantities. Judging by the massive powder archaeologists found on the floor of an ancient house, it's clear it was once used as part of a workshop. The ancient people here would go out and mine chunks of ochre, a natural clay found all over the world. Then they took it back to their dwelling and used stone tools to bash it into powders of different color and consistency. They used the final powdered pigments to paint with. This may not sound all that fascinating, but in the grand scheme of things, it's pretty cool. This was a new technology 40,000 years ago. It shows that people emerging from Eastern Asia and migrating into China's interior were very slowly coming up with their own technologies. It started with stone tools and crude painting instruments and evolved from there. The only bizarre thing about this is that they don't appear to have come up with any other technologies at this particular site. There was no evidence of bone tools, no use of ornaments, nothing except the sudden understanding of how to make red paint. Archaeologists argue this could mean the people here were in the middle of a colonization period. There were likely different archaic groups of humans roaming through the region, all of them with their own unique technologies and skills. It wouldn't be for many thousands of years later that the Homo sapiens dominated the world and technology really took off. Thanks for watching! Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like these, and I'll see you soon! Bye!